Now we're going to look at actually bringing out the idea of the turn of the spin turn and everything that encompasses it. So this would be taking care of the bankroll or the balance and if they're a winner or not and utilizing that get spin results that we have already made. So we're going to start with a scanner. And what a scanner does is it allows us to actually pull or question the console and get an answer from the user while the program is running. So up till now, it's been pretty much an autonomous program that requires inputs every time it gets run, and we can't change those in the middle of the program. So this will allow the program to stop and wait for a response before it continues. So we need to prompt the user to enter some sort of a value. So we'll just say, please press enter to play. And now we're actually going to use that object of scan and get the next token that is passed into it. So whatever's typed in there, big or small, the program will wait until we've entered something. And so at this point, we're now going to just print out the two string whenever the user has entered some sort of value. And what this allows us to do is in a constructor, once it has set all the, the values, while it's true, which will always be the case, it will keep calling spin and allow us to keep entering different values. And now we will allow us to print or put in a, a, an input. Now remember, you actually have to put in something. You can't just press enter. We'll go back and fix that in a little bit. So now every time I, I enter some sort of character and press enter, it will run that spin method. Spin method doesn't do much yet, and so that's what we're going to work on next. So now we're going to print out what the values are every time the user puts in something. And again, we have that object. Remember, use arrays dot to string when you want to print out an array. Now when we run it, every time we enter a value, it's as if we are pulling the arm on a, a real slot machine. So at this point, we have the ability to get random numbers, but we don't have a way to actually place a bet and actually make it worthwhile, a worthwhile slot machine game. So we want to add the ability to have a balance in the machine. We're also going to add it to our two string to let them know what their starting balance is. Then I can add it to our instance. Next is the view box, and this is going to be how many rows of the reels that we get to see when we are making a spin. So we're going to also add this to our constructor because this is something that you really don't change as the person playing the game. This is going to be set by the manufacturer. So this will allow um, us to set that when we create the instance, and the user will just get to play whatever has been set up for that. So now we're giving get spin results the ability to have multiple rows when we actually have a spin. This will be 
the first step of creating that view box that uh, we, we set in the constructor. So for whatever that number is, we're going to iterate through and add that many rows to the result that we're getting back from get spin results. Don't forget to add it to our instance. It's a really good idea to remove that arrays.toString. So now what we're going to do is actually display what that spin got us because the spin method is what calls get spin results. So this is going to allow us to then display every row that was returned back to us. So now we're going to save what we got back from get spin results outside of the for loop and then iterate through it so that we can actually print out what the full 2D array was that we got returned. Now we can see that this one has a view box of three, and so we see three rows returned every time we spin. Whenever we make a spin, they're actually not in ascending order, so we can we know that there could be repeats, and we may not want that. Uh, maybe that is what you want, so maybe you want to leave that. What I want to do is I want to make sure it's an actual reel from ascending order, and so that they're always going to be in ascending order, even though they're going to be in different orientations, I want them to be that way. So the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to get rid of that top for loop, and we're actually going to drop it down a little bit. So we're actually going to make an edit to get spin results. And instead of creating a random row for each one of the rows in the view box, we actually want to set the top one with the random row. And then we will increment each preceding row with the uh, a correct incremented value. So we'll see there on line 27, we have set the top one. Now we can start the next for loop, or the nested for loop, with the ability to take what was in the row before it in the same indice and increment it by one, which will allow it to have our ascending spinner. So this is where we're going to look back at what the array in the above 2D array was for that same indice, grab that, and whatever that value is, we're going to add 1 to it. So now you can see we've got 8, 9, 10, 7, 8, 9, 5, 6, 7, and so on. We actually want to make sure that it doesn't go above what we want the selections to be. So now if we modulo it again by the selection selections per real, then we'll have that situation not occur. And now we can see that if we increase the view box to seven and we make a spin, we now have seven rows versus the three that we just had. 